Dr. Ken here with you taking calculated risks number 11 in our toolbox of cognitive skills. So calculated, what does that mean when it comes to learning in electrical physics? So risk, competency based assessment. So all learning contains risk. So how can we manage the risks? One of the largest risks for many students is not succeeding the first time. The problem is that competency-based training, or CBT, first-time success is actually not required. And this is a hard thing for a lot of students to get their heads around. More often than not, you're allowed at least two attempts at an assessment. The idea is to have gone and done your very best the first time, then if required, do some further gap training and have a second attempt. So that's how CBT works. Work hard for your first assessment, then when you do the assessment, if there's some small gaps, go away, do a bit more study and then come back and do the assessment space again hopefully getting the assessment gaps correct and you're doomed to then be competent. So this assessment approach is unusual for many students. So a strong understanding of the competency based approach is going to be required. So let's start with competency based assessment is not. For many students, they use competency-based assessment as an opportunity to test what the minimum learning requirement is on the first attempt. Rather than do their best and learn as much as they can before the thing, they just do very little and use the first test as a way to work out how much effort is required. And if you remember from my previous slide being um, metacognition, then that's not a good approach. So that's what they often do. They just test for the minimum and on the first attempt. Then they do some quick study and that's often not enough. And then they have a try or attempt at assessment number two. The result is often a failure to make the minimum success level and they find themselves doing the unit all over again right from scratch. So it's important to understand the competency-based assessment, the first assessment is not an opportunity for you to test out how much effort is required. You should have done that well before the first assessment. As the name implies, competency requires success in all the elements of the training unit. So much of the risk can be reduced by closely examining the unit study guide. The guide lists out all the areas where competency is required. So make sure you are confident in all the areas to be assessed. Of course, this helps remove the risk. It's also risk in reading. For me, as I've already explained in many of my slides, I'm very dyslexic. And for me, reading requires a lot of effort. So I only read those things I really need to and are prepared to put the effort into. So much of the general knowledge of a unit is found in the required textbooks. Again, the unit guide often tells you which part of the textbook to read, which parts or chapters the risk here is not understanding what you are reading. I think this puts lots of students off doing the reading. The risk here or the challenge is to push yourself a little. Take a calculated risk that understanding may come at the end of the page or the end of the section. So take the risk of saying, look, I'm going to read these four or five paragraphs that relate to a particular part of electrical theory and I'm gonna read them through whether I understand them or not. Yes, you may have to go back and read them a second time, but that's the risk. So it's best to read a little often rather than big 
read big slabs occasionally. I'll say that again, it's best to read a little often rather than big slabs occasionally. So it's much easier to read one paragraph, make sure you get your head around it, go do something else, come back, read the paragraph, make sure you think you have understood it, and do it paragraph by paragraph. Read little bits often rather than try to read a whole chapter. And if you're anything like me, by the time I've read a whole chapter, I'm struggling to remember what I read at the beginning of the chapter. So take the time to read little, but read often. There's also risk in admitting ignorance, admitting that you don't know. Pride is a big risk. What I mean is that many students don't want to take the risk of admitting they don't understand. Nine times out of ten in the tech classes that I take, I will finish a section I say, OK, any questions? Now, I know that probably 90% of them, there are sections they don't understand, but they don't want to take the risk of putting their hand up and saying, Dr. Ken, I didn't get this bit. They don't want to look as though they are the ignorant dummy. Unfortunately, going to have to get over that. They just pray and hope that at some point the understanding will drop into place. This is the wrong time to take that kind of risk. It's not a calculated risk. It's just a hopeful risk. So the next time you're in class and you're asked questions, and so the teacher says, what do you think? Are there any questions? Is there something you don't understand? Take the risk. Put your hand up and say, I don't ex understand X, Y, Z. Get it clarified, get it right in your own head. And in you getting it right in your own head, you will help others. But that's not the purpose. First and foremost, you'll help yourself. And in a secondary way, you will help others. So you can manage this risk in several ways. One, you can attend tutorials. Most texts provide tutorial nights. And you can minimise your risk of not knowing by attending tutorial nights. Ask the teacher privately about a particular issue. If you're not prepared to put your hand up, I've got a couple of students that almost inevitably, just as morning they're going out to morning tea, they stop and go, oh, Ken, I didn't understand such and such, because they would rather ask me privately. That's OK. So... They will help you find solutions if you ask them. Ask yourself, do I have the required understanding from the previous unit? If not, you may have to go back and do some revision of that previous unit. So there's three things. You can attend tutorials. You can ask the teacher privately, if not in class. And you can ask yourself, do I have the required understanding from the previous unit? And if the answer is no, go back and do some revision. There's also risk in knowing when to ask for help. Knowing to, when to ask for help is a risk in and of itself. But it's better to ask early than ask late or, heaven forbid, have not asked at all. I have many students that fall into that third category. They don't ask early, they don't ask late, and they just don't ask at all, and unfortunately pay a heavy price. So it's better to ask early. Be smart about asking for help by detecting the need. That's a big step. The big step is going, I don't understand, making that clear to yourself, and going, I'm going to have to do something about it because I did not get it. So be smart about asking and detecting the fact that you do need help on a particular issue. As a teacher, my first step is to partner up with struggling students with a confident one. So if you're struggling, find someone else in the class who actually finds it easy. Why wait? Seek out the confident students and sit with them and ask for help. That is a smart move. Help yourself. Do all the assigned work and more if you need it. 
be proactive. It's up to you. It is much easier to help someone who is making an earnest effort to help themselves. So if a teacher sees that you are helping yourself and making an effort to do that, I can assure you the teacher will help you even further in your learning. So what are the take-homes from risk management? So the first one is learning by definition is a risky undertaking. Take the time to understand competency-based assessment, how it works, and take advantage of the way it works. Most of a unit's general knowledge comes from reading. You need to take the reading risk in both understanding and in the effort required. Next, be prepared to challenge pride and admit you are needing help. Proactively use the support systems of tutorials, e-learn sites, make use of your underpinning knowledge that is there from the previous units. And finally, be smart with risk, calculate it, sit with other students who are getting it, build relationships of learning and help each other through the learning process. So I hope you've enjoyed the four aspects of risk management in learning electrical physics.